All right, everybody. Jaguars are in the house after their victory tonight. Uh, some notes. With uh, Tyshawn's double-double uh, tonight, 13th straight game in the Elite Eight that we've had a double-double, a uh, player with a double-double. Uh, we'll also stay with uh, Tyshawn. 12 for 12 from the field. First player to ever in Elite Eight history go perfect from the field. So he's the first player to ever do that in Elite Eight history. Uh, Team-wise, uh, above 50% shooting. I believe they finished uh, percentage-wise 54.7%. Fourth straight year that a team has shot over 50% in their first two games to move on to the championship game. Uh, second championship appearance for Augusta. Their last was back in 2008. And first championship game appearance by a team from the Peach Belt since uh, Montevallo back in 2012. Third all time for a team making it to the uh, national championship. We'll do our normal drill. We'll open it up. Coach will start us off with an opening comment. Then we got Tyshawn Crawford and Jaquez Kirby with us. We'll ask the guys uh, some questions. And then we'll go ahead and release them. And then we'll keep uh, Coach here for a, a few more minutes after that. Coach, congratulations. And uh, Got to be excited to be playing on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. We're getting practice tomorrow. Uh, it's fitting that he's sitting in the middle because everything offensively revolved around him once we figured out how to get open and uh, fill cut properly. But uh, very, very proud of the fact that we got off to it. We were sloppy with the ball. We had six turns the first half, and it was just simple fundamental basketball. And uh, the key to the game was just, like, be cut and getting open like you learn when you're 12 years old. And uh, But we played very well for Aaron Selfish. We didn't have any bad possessions. You know, three of their turnover, three of our turns the first half led to like we call them atomic bombs, just layups, and uh, that hurt us. But very proud to, to coach this team. We get a chance to, to play on the last day of the year, and uh, hey, we get to wear our, our tie dyes, don't we? Absolutely, we get to wear our tie dyes. Those are our lucky uniforms. So, um, I hand this over to big fella. All right, everybody, let's open it up for questions. We've got the microphone up front here. Uh, for today, name and affiliation, and then go ahead and ask your question. We'll start with our student athletes right there. Chad Cook with Augusta University. Tyshawn, you picked up your second foul, and then they threw a flagrant on top of that, I, I believe, uh, you know, about eight minutes, six, seven, seven minutes in the first half. You had two points at that moment. Ended with 25, 12 for 12, like the gentleman said. Um, How did you keep your composure and play your best basketball after that? Adver that trying moment uh first of all i didn't mean to do that you know i apologize to the guy afterwards but then like my uh coaches and stuff they were just like uh, next play just keep believing in yourself and then when i came back in he had put me back in and i just was like i'm just gonna forget that play and try to do the best i can for my team follow up uh were you surprised to go right back in you know throughout the season when you pick up two you usually sit for the rest of the first half and coach put you right back in i think he called time out to get you back in were you surprised about that uh no i wasn't surprised i mean like game situations, you got to go in, you got to be ready to go at any time, you know? Uh, and then I just had to go back in. Uh, Chris Rickerson with the bell ringer. Tyshawn, uh, you know, you guys didn't lean towards Miguel tonight. You know, he, he didn't have, you know, he didn't have any points in the first half. Uh, was that the game plan going in? Oh, oh no, we, we, uh, we lean on whatever they're giving us. So we play off what the defense give us and they were trying to take away Gil's shot. And then I just saw having to be open on the backside, like over the top. So we just made the right play. Gotcha, gotcha. And you, and you know, you uh, finished 12 for 12, like you said, you know, perfect first time ever in Elite Eight history. How's it feel? Oh, it feels great, but job's not finished. You know, we got to keep going out there. I didn't know I was 12 for 12. I just went out there and did what I was supposed to do. Gotcha. Right behind you. Yeah, because I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Um, talk about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rex Walters, Westwood one during the game on Saturday. Uh, talk about, I thought you guys had a dominant effort and what's it like to play with him? What does it open up for you? And what do you open up for him with your ability to shoot the basketball? Well, my ability to shoot the ball, it opens up a lot for him. Just in case I do miss, that's, that's, a, that's an easy read for him. And with him, I know if he gets it, I can cut and I'll, I'll get it back. Coach, how concerned were you with the second foul? I mean, you you went to it pretty quickly. Uh, <laughs> there ain't a lot of seven foot, what do they call them, footers? There were a lot of footers running around this joint. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a concern. We, I think we were down five. And, and 
you know, I think one other game we did it, you know, he hasn't been picking up fouls, to be honest with you. And we had a game, maybe in the conference term, he picked up two. We were struggling a little bit. We put him back in. You know, I'm not a big stats guy, but like Kirby had four assists. I think Miguel had five assists. I mean, he's not doing it himself, okay? I mean, he's really good, but he has got to get the ball, okay? And, you know, we made a little adjustment in the second half and looked toward for it to come from the top spot. And Kirby hit him a couple of times. And um, I think we had two turnovers to throw it to him. I'll live with the turnover, throw him the ball. But uh, no, he, he was good. You know, can we point out that he was one for three from the free throw line? Come on, man. Right. Like, yeah. There goes your percentage. Uh, but no, he was he was good. We, we had to go with him. Right up here up front. Uh, Tyshawn, uh, you just said the job's not finished. How how excited are you to be playing on Saturday? And what's, what's that like to uh, be advancing to uh, the title game for the first time? Uh, you know, it's always exciting to be in a championship game. You know, I've never been a part of anything like this in my life, so I'm just enjoying the moment. But uh, me and my guys, we're ready to go. Uh, we're all excited. We're all having fun in the back, but we all know that there's a next game. We have a next game mentality, and we just keep going like that. Uh, Will Rody, D2 Social Media. Uh, Tyshawn and Jacquees, national championship game is on Saturday. What would it mean to you guys to win it? That's big for me. Like you said, I ain't never, I ain't never won nothing like this in my life. So that'll mean everything to me. Uh, yeah, you know, you watch, uh, you watch NCAA tournament on, on TV all the time as a kid. So growing up, now to be a part of it, everybody watching, it, it's just a great moment, you know. And I'm just trying to uh, stay in it. I guess yeah. ready to go. Ready to do it. Yeah. All right, we're gonna go ahead and release our student athletes, gentlemen. Congratulations, outstanding night, and can't wait to see you all on Saturday. Yeah, you can keep that. Absolutely, keep that. All right, let's open it up now for coach. Who wants to start? Let's go ahead. All right. Um, Dip, uh, uh, Danny Angel on um, Pittsburgh Sports Now. You mentioned um, how you um, found you um, changed things up in the um, second half to get Dom Tesh on the ball. Um, what did you guys change to take advantage of? Well, we knew they were going to switch one through four on the down screens. Uh, it bothered us a little bit the first half. And more importantly, it pushed us out. And, and I mean, something was, you know, it was a simple term called a fill cut. We, we, we were just being lazy, getting open. And, uh, and the switching kind of bothered us a little bit. We had a couple cuts open, and we didn't hit the guy. They were really helping off the opposite side, and our spacing was bad. Our guy was in the corner. He's supposed to be free to line extended. I'm going to bore you, but that was an issue. And our guys pointed out, you know, at the at, I don't know, first media timeout, uh, Tyree Myers, who's from Baltimore, hopefully we'll get that right tomorrow, uh, he came to us and said, man, we're going to win this game. Like, our guys – we don't know how good IUP is. I knew how good IUP was, but we went out there. Uh, you get in a situation, you don't play teams different parts of the country. And uh, we knew we had to get big for the ball, even during the timeouts when he had two fouls. I told him, I said, man, we've won games without them. You know, we don't obviously throw it inside. But, uh, you know, Kirby was good tonight. Like, he played through contact. You know, early in the year, he wouldn't play through contact. He, you know, he would hang his head a little bit. But uh, he was really good. Up front. Uh, coach, just going uh... – uh, last night, obviously, Tyshawn was a little quieter offensively. And then tonight, uh, it's different guys stepping up each game, it seems like. Uh, just talk about that mentality with this team and the unselfishness to be willing to go different places. Yeah, I gave credit. Chico, Chico triple teamed them, basically double triple teamed them. And, uh, you know, that's how, how Miguel went crazy. You know, they asked me to come up for you because I don't, I don't care who takes shots for us as long as they're good shots. And eh, we probably had about six bad shots. Uh, and there was one time that when Kirby dove to the rim and, Ty and Miguel was wide open, that's the only time he kind of missed him wide open. They're not going to leave him. So, uh, you know, we, we play on selfish basketball. We're going to play inside out like teams used to play a long time ago. And uh, you know, we didn't shoot it particularly well, and we're a good shooting team. But, uh, no, it's a, look, they're good, man. Like, <laughs> those guys are good. So, uh, they got good players. And, and we're very fortunate to win a game against a well-coached team. Sorry to ask this question after a great win, but, like, you're going to play against a team that really tries to control tempo. You guys like to get up and down. What, what are the challenges you think those those type of things present in a championship well, game? I'm, I'm on that little whatever they call it, All-American Committee. We got that one right, okay? Yeah, Hudson is special, okay? He's special. Now, you know, I've seen him play, but not in person like that. He's a really good passer. Like, people, I mean, he can score it. He's a really good passer. They do a great, great job of driving it, playing off two feet and kicking it out. Uh, we're going to throw the ball inside. You know, they're not going to shoot it quick. We're going to – we only have about two guys that have the 
the free reign to shoot it quick. And, uh, you know, it, it's not a contrast of styles, uh, but, you know, they play a lot differently than us offensively. If you watch this play, there's not a ball screen set in our whole – we never set a ball screen. And uh, there's never a time they don't set, like, three ball screens in a possession. So, uh, you know, that's going to be a challenge for us. But, you know, we'll, we'll try to figure something out. And, uh, you know, they, I don't think there's going to be any secrets tomorrow. They, they've had a chance to watch us play twice. Uh, I, you know, I told somebody, you know, we, we popped in zones, man. I'm not afraid to zone, you know. My high school coach said it years ago. I, you know, let's see what the other team's got, you know. So, uh, it's not a great zone, but just takes people out of their flow a little bit. But, uh, no, they're a great team. I think they won it last year, if I'm not mistaken. I see their green banner up there a couple of times. Uh, you know, and they got a good, you know, a good contingent of fans. They're probably going to come. But, uh, you know, you know, we we haven't lost in a while. Uh, we we found a little fire on the road. We, we lost at Flagler without Kirby. He was at a funeral. And I remember calling timeout with 30 seconds to go. I said, if we play this way and we get Kerb back, we're going to win some games. Now, I didn't think we'd be playing this one, okay? I was just trying to, you know, win the conference. Uh, but we've kind of developed that fire a little bit on the defensive end of the floor. And, uh, you know, part of the reason we play zone is no big secret. You, you got a footer. You got to keep him around the rim, you know? And, uh I, I know their game plan. They're going to involve them in a ball screen, okay? Uh, so we'll figure some stuff out. Any other questions? Okay. A couple more real quick. Coach, uh, the 50% from the field was mentioned. Um, you know, two games. I, I think you're my, definitely the only team that's done that in this tournament, maybe the only team that's done it even one game. Um, so there's that. But then there's also, and that's been consistent all season, then there's also the defensive field goal mm -hmm. percentage yep. you you have it there maybe you can tell us what it is and tell us what the key was to that because they only scored 29 in the second yeah half. I, don't, I don't have my glasses but like if you take out the three pointers we missed we shot a really high percentage from around the basket but we got a guy that can make laps you know defensively you know whatever our principles are we're trying to go back on shooters we're gonna get tested on saturday there's no doubt about that um uh, yeah so i don't like i said yeah oh, clint's glasses uh <laughs> You know, the only stat I really care about is a score. I'm like the worst stat guy, okay? <laughs> All I look at is turnovers and rebounds and defensive field goal percentage. And, uh, you know, we, we were good defensively. You know, Tyree Foster's good. Like, you know, we, we had kind of game plan to go under the ball screens and keep him out of the paint a little bit. He still got the paint. But, we, you know, we forced the shooter. Troy did a great job at contesting. We were able to hide Miguel on somebody. Uh, so, it was a good effort. And Kirby was really good. And, um you know, defense and rebounding, take care of the basketball. You, you, you know, you're playing the last game of the year. Last question. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Coach, uh, you know, number 10, I don't know how to pronounce his name, number 10 for uh, Indiana. You know, he played really well the first half. I don't think he missed a shot, you know, dominated the first half. What did you guys do to slow him down? Well, we got, we always got to make decisions on who Tyshawn's going to guard. Okay. He definitely can't, couldn't guard uh, Porterfield number 11. He can't guard him. I know that. Uh, so we had to put him on, on 10. And he's going to make some open jump shots. We have to give up something with Tyshawn. We can't expect him to go out there and guard that. And he did hit some shots. He hit a three in the corner late. I don't know if that was the only bucket. Uh, we went zone. It, like I said, it keeps Tyshawn around the basket a little bit more. And, uh, you know, they, like I mean, we kind of knew they were going to try to attack Tyshawn. Uh, and they didn't ball screen with him. because That's why we put uh, uh, Kirby on, on Porterfield. Great, Coach. Thank you so much. Congratulations on a terrific victory. And we'll see you Saturday.